I'm now joined by Dr. Roy Spencer. Dr. Spencer, thank you so much for your time. First, can you tell us a little bit about your temperature measurements? There are five main ones around the world. What makes yours special and what have you found? Well, the global temperature data set that John Christie and I started uh, over 30 years ago, uh, it, it, the, the advantage to it is that it's from satellites and it covers the whole earth. There's no other uh, temperature data set that covers the whole earth. Uh, so that's one of the things we like about it. Uh, it only goes back to 1979, so we can only talk about uh, how much warming there has been in the last 43 years in that data set but that is the period when it was supposed to be warming the most. And what have you found with that, uh, the warming? What, have, what sort of warming have we had? Is it in line, for instance, with the predictions from the climate models of 10, 15, 20 years ago that we face a climate crisis with very dangerous rises already in the planet's temperature? Well, if we do a comparison, an apples to apples comparison between the satellite measurements, uh, which are actually of a fairly deep layer of the atmosphere, okay? Uh, that's where most of our weather occurs, is, is in the troposphere, the lowest part of the atmosphere. And if we do an apples to apples comparison between the satellite measurements and what over two dozen climate models have predicted since 1979, uh, for that same layer, we, our measurements are actually at the bottom end of all those models. In other words, the warming we see is lower than most, if not all of those models. So there is a discrepancy between what the, what the observations are showing, which shows about a, an average of 0.13 degrees C per decade warming, which is, you know, a very small number, uh, compared to the climate models, which are generally, oh, twice that at least. In fact, your latest model, and that, you know, taking into account the depressing effects of uh, El Nino and all that, uh, shows a warming for January of 0 0.03 above the 30-year average. But your kind of measurements uh, have been upsetting to people that want us to believe there's a climate emergency happening, climate crisis, existential. Uh, and Google has now demonetized your site, claiming... It makes unreliable and harmful claims. Which claims have they told you are unreliable and harmful? Well, they're not specific about what claims. They're basically, it says the whole, they're, the, what their uh, website tells me is that all of my whole website is, uh, basically is unreliable and harmful claims, which is ironic because um, when they announced, when Google announced late last year that they were going to start demonetizing climate skeptic websites, they talked about websites that promoted uh, that it was a hoax, which I never say, that there's no warming occurring, which I never say, that there is warming occurring, or that uh, say that the warming isn't partly due to humans. And I do say, I think warming is the warming we have measured, which isn't very strong, is probably at least 50% due to humans. I can't prove that. It's just the theory, the global warming theory of increasing CO2, that, that it's entirely possible that that's the case. So I, I don't know why they uh, decided to do this. I think they have a bunch of liberal arts majors that just heard that the uh, that the scientists don't like the answers we get and therefore we're deniers, right? Let me tease out exactly that because I find this amazing but also very sinister. So the people who run Google who aren't climate scientists have punished your website and you are a scientist, one of the leading climate scientists in the world measuring the world's temperature. They've punished your site without saying exactly why, what you've done wrong claiming you are unreliable and harmful because, it seems to me, simply because your data indicates the planet isn't warming as much as alarmists have said. Have I got it right there? Yes, you've got it exactly right. If, if, if people like myself don't buy into the narrative that you know, global warming is not only occurring, 
but it's, you know, it's going on at a catastrophic rate and we have to do something about it, blah, blah, blah. You know, if, if you don't go along with that narrative, you get thrown under the bus. <laughs> but this is crazy. Now, I, I've heard you say, look, the money's neither here nor there to you, right? That, that's one issue. Put the money aside. I'm talking more about the principle where the social media giants can attack scientists because the results of their science doesn't fit the global warming alarmist cause that activists want to push. Aren't you actually frightened by this, de by this development? Well, quite honestly, no, because they didn't come right out, you know, publicly and say that Dr. Spencer is spreading, you know, nonsense. It, this was just a case of them not allowing me to put their ads, uh, Google ads, on my website in order to help support the website. You know, there wasn't any big announcement or anything, because if, if they had gone public with attacks, I would defend myself. But all this was was just, you know, not allowing me to make any money off of the website, which is fine. Uh, you know, I, I don't mind supporting it myself. Yeah, well, uh, there's other uh, sites that have also been punished, like what's up with that? And the money does matter a lot to them. Well, I'm glad you're feeling sanguine about this, but I actually worry that this is the start of something more because the social media giants have been flexing their muscles in stifling certain debate, and I think they're going to get very busy on this one. But, Roy Spencer, I've followed your work for many, many years. I admire your courage. I admire your clarity of thought. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Andrew.